Good morning. Well, I actually don't know what time it is for you because I don't know what time I'll get around to posting this. But for me, at least, it's morning. So today's video is going to be all about everything I crocheted in the month of February. I am going to be looking at my computer today because I'm trying to, um, I guess, keep myself organized in the video. I'm trying to, I believe, yes, I made a album this month and I tried to keep adding photos to it. The funny thing about that is that I know I stopped adding to this about a week ago. Okay, so I had every intention of adding to this album um, every week, I guess, before I made this video. I did, I did keep it updated, but you know, it's a little bit, I know that it's going to be a little bit out of date, but I can go back into my albums and then I did gather some stuff around me so that I can kind of jog my memory. All right, so first off, the first thing that I completed in the month of February was a pattern test for Mama Kaylee's Creations over on Instagram and it was for this Hydra. Isn't that amazing? I went for monotone in color and then I did some felt embroidery for the eyes. I did, this is made in Sweet Snuggles Light, combo green, and I'm not sure what this color is called, but I thought that they just looked so good together. But look at, look at how big this guy is. I don't even think I'll be able to get them all on camera. But I love this pattern. It, it's larger, so it takes a while to work up. But honestly, once you're past the heads and you're into the body, it really, it goes on from there. So... This pattern, it isn't no so, but it is low so. So you make the three heads, one, two, three, all the way into their neck, and then you connect the heads together. You make the body, you go all the way down to the tippy top of the tail. You do make the legs separate, you make the tail pieces separate, and then you sew them on. And then the spine, I'm pretty sure the spine was slip stitched into the pattern. So I don't think that you had to sew that on. No, you didn't, you didn't have to sew this on. But that's her, and I love her so much. I really do. I think she's gorgeous. It's like really hard to get good pictures of her, but when you're looking at her in person, it's super cool. So I'm really excited to take this to market. Um, it's going to be expensive, so I don't really expect it to sell, but I mean, I just like to show off stuff that I do because it's really cool. So I was doing volunteering that day, that Saturday, and I think the pattern was due on a Sunday. And so I took it and I just had this like giant bag and I'm crocheting this big, you know, Hydra. And so everyone's like, what are you making? And so like, I would tell them, I'd explain what it is. And then one girl goes, oh, I thought it was dinosaur's foot. So she thought I was making a dinosaur big enough to warrant a foot this size. It was amazing. I was only up to here when she saw, so I guess I can see why, but that would have been a serious dinosaur. Um, the next thing that I did was I finished up my um, neutral toned chimeras for my pattern that released last month. And so this is one of them. And so I really like this one because it looks, you know, traditional lion colors in the front, but then in the back you get the pop of green for the wings. I really like that. And then um, the very next thing I did was my daughter's friend was having a birthday party. Or not a birthday party, but she was having a birthday. And so my daughter requested that I make her her own Mr. Chimera because she really is into the show Spy Family, which is what my Chimera was based off of in the original colorway. Her friend is, um, well, they're both 15. And um, she's like a, I don't know. She's a little more girly than my daughter, so I went ahead and did it in pastel colors, and I think it turned out so nice. So I don't have it here to show you because she already has it, but um, it came out really good. I did another Chimera, and it's this little mini one. It was after I got the uh, Michael Skinny Chenille, and so I did it up in 
the Michael Skinny Chenille, and I just think it came out so darling. I did a new wing style, and I wrote it down. I'm going to be using it in a future pattern, but I think it came out so cute. And then I did my regular embroidery eyes, but I did them – usually when I do embroidery eyes – this is probably going to be the best example. So when I do my embroidery eyes, I do, you know, a lot of people do this style of embroidery eyes, which is kind of like a kawaii style. But if I do say this is blanket yarn, I use a weight four to do the embroidery eyes. And I don't know if I have a smaller example. Oh, here we go. And then so for this one, it's a weight for velvet and I used actually fingering weight yarn to do the embroidery eyes. So I always go down. I think it looks cleaner that way. But for this one, I just used the same yarn, the skinny chenille to do the embroidery eyes. And so I don't like doing that with blanket yarn because I think that it makes it look messy. Like if you were to try to do these eyes with the same weight yarn, with blanket yarn, I, in my opinion, it looks messy. I don't like the way that looks. I've tried it and like, I don't know. I just don't like it. So, but for this one, I did it because I just wanted to keep it very pastel toned. I was really enjoying the colors I was working with and I think it turned out really nice. I really liked it. And so that completed my Chimera Gang and for a little while I had I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, maybe six at one time. And so the very next thing I did was I, when I was working on my Valentine's Day order for my friend Mia, and she was the one that ordered the Shrek and Fiona, and then I went ahead and threw the little onion keychain pattern in for her. So first I finished the onions, and then I finished Shrek, and then I finished Fiona. And so I don't have those here with me because they are with her. She loved them. If you didn't see that in my last video, I did film that process, the vlog, and I showed a lot of the construction. I mean, I didn't give away the pattern, but the pattern is free on YouTube, and it's also linked in that video. And um, I don't know. I just really enjoyed making those. I think they came out really nice. So the very next thing was my very own Valentine's Day present that I gave to my husband. It was a part of a larger gift. I didn't just give it to him, but I crocheted him a little bear. And so I did it in, um, I actually used Big Twist Posh for it. And um, that's the only color in Big Twist Posh that I own. I only own the croissant. And so I crocheted him a little bear. And so my husband is a safety and like, well, I don't know. I don't know what his title is actually. He's a safety manager on both sides. So like inventory safety, like site safety, and then also environmental safety. So I feel like those are three different jobs, but they're all his job. <laughs> so um, he has like this safety vest that he wears at work sometimes when he's in certain areas. And so I crocheted one for his little bear and then I put on like like a little snarky sign that's sort of like, where are your safety glasses? Because I don't know, you know, he talks to me about work and like sometimes like he tells me about like silly stuff that he has to get after people for. And then I also, I stole his badge one night and I took a picture and I scaled it down and then I made the bear a little copy of his badge and I put it on there. And so I gave that to him for Valentine's Day. I put it in like his truck at night. So then when he drove to work, he had it. And so now it's hanging out in his office. Okay, so I've told you before, I've showed you my Gengar like tons of times in these videos. I feel like Gengar is my co-host at this point. I pattern tested for Small of Co. again in February, and it was Small of, Small of the Pokemon. And so I think this guy turned out awesome. I did the felting for his face design again, and I did it along his mouth, and I don't know why. This is my favorite felt work that I've done so far. I do, um, I like to needle felt my faces in, so I think it looks cleaner than just gluing them on. And I think this one, I don't know. Like, I feel like I just, I did a good job on this one. I'm proud of myself. Um, the whole pattern is no sew. So this is a great pattern if you're looking to add um, kind of an original plushie into your market lineup. If you have an anime, an anime, if you have an anime that you're writing, no. If you have like, a, like an anime themed con that you're going to go to or a festival or something, like this would be a great addition because I feel like Smolive is not a plushie 
like when you're shopping. So people who usually buy Pokemon plushies, they're usually like on the hunt for them. Like my daughter has a collection. We went on a road trip to Disney World and there was one point where my husband stopped at a gas station, you know, as you do. We stopped at a larger one. It wasn't Bucky's and it wasn't one of the ones that I'm familiar with. It was one in one of the states between here and there. Probably, I want to say Alabama. And it was the middle of the night and my daughter and my son got out to go to use the restroom. And my husband told him, like, go ahead and pick one thing. And so my daughter, she starts going around looking at snacks. And my son was like, beeline, just takes off running. And, you know, my daughter and my husband are like, what? Where's he going? They look. He grabs a Pokemon plushie. He comes back and he's like, you said one thing, right? And then he's like showing my husband his Pokemon that he picked out. And my daughter's like, wait, anything? And then he was like, like, you know, like I didn't specify, I guess so. And so she went and she got her own Pokemon. And so her and my son both have like pretty large collections of Pokemon plushies. So I feel like people who like to collect a specific type of thing, I like feel Pokemon. like when they see Pokemon that they aren't used to seeing, you can find Pikachu anywhere. You can find Squirtle anywhere. You can find Bulbasaur anywhere. You can find Charmander anywhere. And then you have the lesser known starters like Mudkip, who people still love, but you can find it if you're looking. It's not as popular as the main four, but you're going to find it. Well, Smoliv isn't a Pokemon you're going to find anywhere. So if you have one of these and a Pokemon collector wanders by, even if they don't necessarily know him off the top of their head because he's not one of the, you know, he's not one of the main starters. They're going to look at that and go, is that a Pokemon? And you're going to go, yeah, it's small of. And, you know, if they're a collector in their heart, they might just pick it up because this is so unique. My daughter does not have a small of in her collection. My son does not have a small of in his collection. And they both, every time they see this, they're just like looking at it and kind of in awe because they don't have one. They never see them. This isn't a guy that's just like everywhere the way Pikachu is. So if you're really looking to diversify, this is a good market make. He is larger. I did him in weight for velvet. So this is smaller than he would be in regular blanket. You know, in blanket, he's probably going to be, you know, yay big. He's bigger. So that in and of itself will take a little time. But the pattern works up really fast. You know, you make the two legs. You start where, well, first you make the leaves. And then you're going to make your two legs, start working the body. The leaves are crocheted in, you decrease down, you start your bulb. It's great. This pattern works up so fast. It didn't take me any time at all. And I really love it because my little Pokemon corner is going to have such, you know, kind of like a unique little guy in there because you don't see him every day. This isn't going to be something that every crocheter is going to have on their table, even if they do do anime. So even if you are in a market where people... You know, there might be another crocheter there that has Pikachu. There might be another crocheter that has Bulbasaur. There's probably not going to be another crocheter that has Smoliv unless this video goes viral, which would be awesome. And then everyone just takes my advice and there's Smolivs everywhere, which even still, that'd be kind of awesome because now that guy is just going to be the new Pikachu. That'd be really cool. Highly unlikely, but it would be cool. All right. So the next thing I worked on... Is this little guy? Isn't that just like a, the funniest little thing you've ever seen? So technically he's not done because I need to add hair at the top of his head, but I'm calling it good just because I want to show him off to you. Because look at look at that little funny bill. So this is actually a free crochet pattern. It's available over on Instagram. Of course, I'm going to tag the creator and I will have a link for you. I um, was trying out free Pokemon patterns. And that video will be coming to you pretty soon. And so when I was testing them out, I was testing them out as market makes. So I actually have this guy made up in quite a few sizes and I tested my time on him. And um, he took me about 45 minutes, which is a little bit longer, but this is wait for velvet. Remember, it's my favorite yarn to use. Every time you see something and I'm talking about how long it makes, it, how long it took to make, Really look at it and see if it's weight for velvet because in blanket yarn, this is going to be bigger. It's actually quite a bit bigger. I think it's around that size. Um, but this is a little like a, like a chibi Psyduck. So this is as if you had a Psyduck and you smashed him. <laughs> and I just thought it was so funny. Um, my friend Weird Wolves over on Instagram, Kami, Kami, I actually don't know how to pronounce her name, but that's not my fault. 
It's K-A-M-I-E. I know her name. I just don't know if it's Kami or Cami. Because I've never heard the name before, so I don't know. But she made a bunch of these. She was in the tester group for it. And, like, her posts and her pictures were just so funny. And I was like, you know, it's not typical for a Psyduck. Like, if you just saw this, like, without context, you wouldn't be like, oh, it's a Psyduck. It might give you Psyduck vibes once I get the hair on there. But, like, you wouldn't just be like, oh, it's Psyduck, like, in your brain. But I actually think that's kind of genius, too. Because... There are some markets that have a no, like no um, copyright character rule. So like if you have Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse, if you have Pokemon, like you won't be able to take them, but that's not going to stop the customer from asking. Cause I do every once in a while, I have a customer that's specifically looking for Pokemon or specifically looking for Disney princesses and stuff like that. And so if you have something like this, you know, this isn't, it's Psyduck, right? That's the intention. It's like a little chippy Psyduck to be funny. But there's no way like a vendor manager organizer, they're not going to look at this and be like, you know, you can't have that because this isn't an exact replica. You know, most of our stuff isn't because as crochet artists, it's really, we're not manufactured. We're not pouring, you know, molds and stuff. So I think when they exclude trademarked characters or copyrighted characters, I think that's the intention is because sometimes, you know, they are artists, but sometimes, you know, people will just like 3D print. So like if you're doing something like that, you can get a lot more precise and you can get a lot more like you can get closer to the original character. And so stuff like that, you know, you do start skirting the line of like infringing upon IP and stuff. And I'm not against it because I think ultimately at the end of the day, we're helping the brand. We're not hurting the brand. We're spreading and showing the love. So I think that, you know, when people make crochet patterns for licensed characters, I understand a little bit, like this much, what the company is saying when they don't want people doing that. But honestly, at the end of the day, it's not damaging the brand. So the next the thing I made was pokeballs so I made about four of these little pokeballs and they're all around my house my kids keep stealing them they've been taking them and saying I choose you and then throwing them at each other and it's been super fun so this is a pattern by ghost kitty crochet over on Instagram it is a free pattern that you can find on her profile and boy is it nice look at this pokeball where did I change the colors where 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 tell me you don't know you can't see. I know. It's great. So she wrote this pattern up in a way that when you're doing the color changes, um, they're not showing. So I overstuffed this one a little bit. I have a better example over there, but I don't want to go get it. So the one I have over there is like a little bit shorter, but that's because I like to stuff mine so that when the stuffing is compressing over time, they don't get so like empty. Like if you see this, like that's stuffed. But so I love these. I love them so much. It takes me over 30 minutes, under an hour. So between 45 and 50-ish minutes. But I will say that I did get faster as I was making them. And I only timed myself for the first two. I didn't get to time myself for the last two. But I would highly, highly, highly recommend this. Especially if you do them in blanket yarn. Because this is a, like a decent size. You can go anywhere from, I would say... Like from a consumer point of view, I can see a ten to fifteen dollar price tag on this, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't gasp, <laughs> I wouldn't go running from the stall. I think ten dollars they're gonna fly off the shelf. I think fifteen it's gonna be a little rougher, but you might get a few people to buy them. And if you get super comfortable, I will say that by the last one I didn't even have to use the pattern. So I made four. By the fourth one, I didn't use the pattern anymore. So it is an easy pattern to memorize. And the only sewing you're going to do is the button. I do highly recommend this pattern. It was fun to make. It's easy to memorize. And I think it would go well in any market. Especially if all you want to do is kind of, if you have some of these Pokemon patterns that aren't exact replicas, there is another girl over on Instagram. She's releasing a whole set of Pokemon patterns. But they are more um, like chubby style. They're like... um. I'll post a picture. 
So if you aren't familiar with Pokemon, they wouldn't like like Pokemon to you. So like your mom who casually has seen Pokemon in the background or maybe has bought you Pokemon specific merchandise, she wouldn't see them and think Pokemon because they don't look like it. They're chunky and chubby and they all have the same body style with different features to make them look like Pokemon. They're really cute. I want to grab a few of those patterns and make them up. But I feel like having something like this, even if all you want to do is have that you know, this is very branded. This is very Pokemon. There's, you know, hardly a person alive that couldn't see this and be like, oh, that's Pokemon. Even like your grandma who says Pokemans, you know, she's going to see this and recognize what it is. So if you have some of these other patterns that are less specific to Pokemon, if you have a few of these Pokeballs just like around the table near that section, it's going to clue people in to look a little closer, see those details and realize like, oh yeah, that's a Pokemon. That's so cool. And then it might get them interested in some of your other plushies that you have around. Okay, and so next was a Squirtle. So my friend Ashley, I had a Valentine's Day sale that went on over on my Etsy shop. And my friend Ashley, who is a crocheter and my patterns were on sale, she skipped over my patterns and she actually bought a finished product for me. She bought this little Squirtle. Um, she bought the mini, so they're like about this big. I went ahead and made it for her. And since it was for her and I knew her, I put a little special extra effort into it. I did do um, a felt base. So if you don't know, if you guys have never needle felted, the facial details, you know, if you're just doing like a plain old circle, it doesn't take that long. But the more you add into it, the longer it takes. It's like anything else. If you add more details, it's going to take longer. And so for hers, I did do a lot of effort. I pulled up some pictures of Squirtle and I really tried to get the eyes to kind of match up with, you know, the cuter versions of like some of the fan art that I've seen. And I think I succeeded. It came out really, really cute, but it did take a while. So I don't publicize that on my website as an option because I wouldn't even know how to begin to charge for that. And then with it, I went ahead and made um, the Pokeball again, but I made it in the skinny chenille from Michaels. I asked her what her favorite colors were. She said yellow and gray. And so I made her a little yellow and gray Pokeball. And I think it came out so cute. I went ahead and put it on a keychain and I added just like some beads that said her name. So I sent those off to her already so I don't have them to show you, but I think it came out super cute. So guys, if you're enjoying this video so far, please go ahead and subscribe, like, give me a comment down below. It really helps me with engagement and helps me reach other people so they can see if they too like the wacky chaos that I bring to YouTube. All right. So next up we got Bongo, Bongo the dragon. If you saw my crochet a dragon with me video, he is from there. I do not have him to show for you because my daughter snagged him up. She saw him, was like, mom, is that Bongo? Because she was actually helping me name him um, when I was like finishing up his needle felting details because I actually did do needle felting on his eyes and his blush and his little nostrils. And so she had walked in when I was working on that. And she's like, what is it? And I was like, oh, it's a little dragon. I flipped him around and showed her the like little wings that we did. And she was like, oh my gosh, you know, I love him. And I was like, oh, really? I was like, what should we name him? And so like I'm needle felting while we're like bouncing names off of each other. And so together we came up with Bongo. And so the other day, I don't know why. Oh, when I was writing up the details for the video so that I can hit publish, she um, came into the living room and she saw him. She was like, oh no is Bongo getting bought <laughs> because she saw me like, um, I was like examining the pattern. And I was like, oh no, 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 I'm just writing up for the video. And she's like, oh, and she's like, can I have him? And so we've been watching Veronica Mars together. And so we were on the couch and she's just holding him and we're watching Veronica Mars. And three episodes later, she's still cuddling like this size of a dragon. And I was like, okay, you can have him. And so now he's up in her room. And I guess I could go in there and get him, but I really don't want to see what her room looks like right now. <laughs> All right, guys. Next is this little pomperine baguette. Pom pomperine? Pom pomperine baguette. I wasn't a Hello Kitty girly growing up. But Small of Co. again, Olivia. I know, I know, I know. You know, I find designers that I like and I stick with them. Seagull plushies, Small of Co., Red Mill Crochet. I know that you're eyeing that beautiful girly in the background of this video, but I didn't finish her until today. Today's March 3rd. She was not crocheted in February. I can't include her. I'm sorry, guys. You're going to have to wait till next month's wrap up. 
But there is a reel of her over on my Instagram if you want to see more details. Anywho, so Small of Co. had a tester call for this little pom 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 baguette. I think it's so cute. It's f so funny. I actually have two more bodies that just need their details added on because I did go ahead and I love needle felting, guys. It takes longer. People aren't necessarily going to know that it's, you know, like adding more time. I don't know. I don't know what I would want them to know about it. People aren't going to know though, but I just love it. I do. I think it makes stuff look so much cuter. I really do. I don't know. I'm addicted. I blame, oh man, I don't know how to say her Instagram name. I'm sure it's saying it on the, on the screen right now. She does the most incredible needle felting work on her plushies. And so we got to talking we got to know each other and then she kind of walked me through one day how to attempt it on my own and it worked out great and like I just I love it she is so good though like I'm okay and I do like my work I think it looks great but she's amazing and I keep telling her that she needs to throw like a little mini tutorial together and sell it you know because like it just levels up. It leveled up for me anyways. Like, I don't know, maybe you're incredible at embroidery and there are some people that are. I have seen examples of like embroidery on crochet where they do like finite details and they are so good. I've tried, I'm just not. Um, and there's some people that like to sew the felt on their plushies like Muntasha, she's a great example. And like, who else? Ghost Kitty does it too. She's done a tutorial on how you can create your own felt eyes by sewing them instead of gluing them. And I think the work looks so incredible. I'm just not that great at sewing. And I really don't like pinning stuff to other stuff. I mean, you've seen me when I sew my plushies together. It's chaos. I literally just like hold it in place and sew it. I don't even own Ami sticks. I will use my like two millimeter crochet hooks if something is really wonky. But most of the time I just, you know, a hope and a prayer and I sew, I sew it up. I'm a little bit of chaos that way. But um, yeah, I don't know. I just think that the needle felting is the way to go for me. And I think it adds so much charm. So I love this guy. He actually sits on my desk now. I have like a book stand on my desk that I keep, you know, crochet books. And then I'll keep the pattern though while I'm crocheting. Because I do like to work off of a paper pattern most of the time. I will print it out and then I'll just have it on my desk so that I can like work off of it. Sometimes I'll work from my computer. I do save everything in my notes app and like keep it organized, but I don't know. So he sits on my little book stand now. And even though I'm not necessarily a Hello Kitty fan, I just think it's so fun, you know? It's bread, but it's a dog. And like, I don't know, it just makes me happy. I like it. All right. So I've been working on the finishing touches for my Dedene pattern this week. And so I made this little like pink version of my Dedene. The Dedene pattern is a two-in-one. It has, sorry, I have to fix its ears every time I take it out because it's kind of smushed inside the cubby. So it has big Dedene. I know she doesn't have her whiskers, guys. I know. I'm going to put them on. I promise. I'm going to put them on this week. So it has the big version of Dedene with all the sewn details. And then it has a low sew version. And it's a smaller version. Um, these aren't the same yarn though. So this isn't this, the like correct scale. But she would only be a little bit bigger, probably here. So this is a smaller version, a smaller stitch count. And then it includes like the instructions for how to do like to crochet in the legs. And then the back strip is surface crochet, the tail's a little smaller, the ears are smaller, and then, I don't know. I just like it though. I did needle felting on the face. I know, I know, I know. Needle felting, needle felting, needle felting. How many times can I say it? But I like it. I think they came out so cute. And so this will actually be out, it's supposed to actually be out today, but it's not ready. It'll probably be out sometime next week. For the month of February, I made this little dragon. It looks a bit like a dragon cow. I made a dragon pig, I made a dragon cow. What do you wanna do? You gonna sue me? 
it's hard to tell, but she does have like a little heart belly pad. She has the ne the needle felted eyes, and I just love her. I need to put horns on her still, but I couldn't I couldn't um like pin down what I wanted to do for the horns. I didn't know if I wanted little points or if I just wanted to like for my Mr. Chimera for this one the the regular pattern calls for you to sew on horns but the low sew version I gave the option to do embroidered horns and so I embroidered horns on this little guy because he's the low sew option you can see by the legs and so I didn't know if I wanted to use the same horns for it but aren't they so cute together I just have this vision in my head of doing like a mini little pastel collection for myself that I just keep on my shelves in the month of February, I also crocheted another dragon. So this is Laguna. I put a poll up over on Instagram and I asked people to give me, I, well actually I put a question box up and I asked people to give me names for this little dragon. And I got a couple suggested names. I narrowed it down to three. I put those up in a poll form and I asked people to vote for this little like sleeping dragon. Isn't that so cute? And um, Laguna one. So this is Laguna the dragon. I haven't decided if it's gonna be a crochet pattern yet. I think there's some kinks that I need to work out if it is gonna be like, I think I would change the color change to be way down here. So I think the body would be all the way to here in the turquoise and then just have like the fins be the accent color. And then I think I would like to change the way I constructed it. I think I would like to make it one long piece because that's actually not how I made it. But I just love it. I love the way the body curves because when you ever you watch animals sleeping, they kind of sleep curved. They don't really sleep in straight lines too often. I, when I was making this that day, I actually was watching my cat. She was sitting on the floor and then she fell asleep and she was curved in on herself and I thought it looked so cute. And so I really love these like ruffly fins. I just think they're so sweet. And then these like axolotl kind of frilly things. But yeah, I love her so much. I'm thinking of doing like three different sleeping water dragons that all just kind of look different and if I do decide to do a pattern, doing it like a pattern pot so that you just have like the three versions and you can kind of mix and match and make your own little like sleeping water dragon. But I think that that came out so nice. I just think it came out so nice and I really like it. I did film a bit of it, but I didn't get to film the whole thing, but I did, I did write the whole thing down. All right, guys. Thank you for hanging out with me and looking at everything I made for the month of February. I hope you saw some stuff that made you smile. I hope you saw some things that you haven't seen before. And if you have your own wrap-up video showing all your makes from the month of February, please leave a link down below so that I can go and watch your video or even your Instagram wrap so I can see all the stuff you make. It's so fun to see the unique creations that people are making because I feel like sometimes in our feed we start getting bogged down and seeing the same patterns over and over and over and over and over. And you know, that's nice that's the you know benefit of a viral pattern is because it is good you know it's cute but I like to see all the other stuff out there because there's so much available and like it's so fun and you never know when you're gonna find what you've like been looking for all right thanks have a good day